You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots. You know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events most of all. Thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest. And first timer on Ron Siegel Radio, Matt Koenig is with us. Welcome. Hey, thanks, Bron. I'm, I'm excited to be on here, man. Glad to have you with us. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance when you call that number. It comes directly to me first. There are operators standing by. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team, when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And of course, we are celebrating today. We celebrate every day on Ron Siegel Radio, National Compliment Day. Okay, so have a great day. Wait, wait, how do, compliment? What? I'm, I'm not even sure. I don't compliment you. Aren't you looking great today? <laughs> Isn't it a wonderful day outside? It's beautiful Southern California or wherever you might be on the World Wide Web watching us. Matt, you're what, in Tennessee today? Yeah, down in Sparta, Tennessee. We moved here so that we could specifically say this is Sparta every time someone comes over. It's awesome. Sparta, Tennessee. So you're, I shouldn't say this, but you're back in America. I still, I'm still in California. <laughs> so... <laughs> Ah, yeah, but but you know something, I bet that uh, even here in California, we're celebrating today, and I bet uh, Tennessee, they've probably got some some uh, cry towels out there. Josh had them last week with the Raiders in, in Vegas, although, you know, Josh isn't a Raider fan. I'm glad because I hate the Raiders, but Tennessee, they're, they're, I know, I know there's people here that love the Raiders. But, you know, Rams, 49ers, and we've got the uh, Chiefs, and who are the Chiefs playing? I, I, I can't even I, – I'm, I'm, I'm a little slow, <laughs> and I watch the games you too. I, you Chiefs know what? Bang- I, I should have known the Bengals because one of my dearest friends is a big-time Bengal fan. So I spent Chiefs, most of my Bengals. life in Michigan. So, you know, when I was a Patriots fan because of Tom Brady, which meant everybody in the country hated me. Exactly. <laughs> and then he went to the Bucks, and I went, okay, I guess I'll be a Bucks fan. But if I'm being honest, I haven't watched enough this year to, to chime in as an actual fan. Uh, I'm just a fair weather fan, right? I like, I like being on the side of winning. <laughs> okay. Like. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time uh, that way when the Rams left California, they were in St. Louis. I was kind of semi Ram fan. You know, I had season tickets before they left. I'm old enough to remember when they, before they left. Uh, let's move right along, though, because today's also Beer Can Appreciation Day. It is what it is. Yeah, I don't know about that one. But having beaten anorexia, you know, I can go heavy duty on National Peanut Butter Day. And, you know, maybe now, now Josh made this great picture or the team made this great picture of National Peanut Butter Day. Where's the chocolate? I mean, how do you how do you have peanut butter without chocolate? I mean, that's. That's sacrilegious. I like peanut butter, but, you know, peanut butter, chocolate, they just go together. My wife gets peanut butter and chocolate ice cream. Uh, but peanut butter day, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Although after National Pie Day yesterday, I don't know. We're going we're gonna to move right along, though, and see. Do we even want to see what's going on in the markets today? Uh, that's an ugly sight. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 885 points. Ow! 
S and P 500 down 141. The Nasdaq is down 539. Oil. The only thing that I'm glad to see down a little bit, down 256 a barrel. Yeah, we've got a new president in town, and the markets are worried uh, about wartime. You know, when the Democrats go into office, I guess that's what happens is you get wartime president. So mm. let's, uh, <laughs> let's just keep on moving right along. About that oil prices. So, you know, I don't even want to think about this because – I, I frequently mention our tremendous underwriter, Lori. She's paying 307 a gallon is the average in Louisiana, 307. But Matt, you're at 304. You know, so. it's you know, it, it's better than it was when we lived in Washington, but uh, we also don't pay for gas anymore because we plug our Tesla in in the garage. So the gas prices could be eight dollars a gallon. And thankfully, right now it's not gonna affect my wife and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, okay, so Jody's paying three fifty seven. Josh, you're down again, three eighty in in Nevada, and right here in the formerly Golden State. Are you ready for this? I mean, the rest of the world. I, I might have to go. I might have to get one of those cars from you there, Matt, because right now in California, four dollars sixty five cents a gallon. Four sixty-five regular unleaded. That's regular unleaded gasoline. Yeah, that's not that's not even for the whole tank. That's just for a gallon. That's uh, Hawaii, four thirty-four national average three dollars thirty-one. Of course, you got to remember we are in California. We the, the only thing we really like more than sunshine is we like taxes, <laughs> right? I mean, twenty-five for about twenty-five percent taxes on our gasoline here. So you understand why we're at. Four sixty-five a gallon on average in the formerly Golden State. Wow. Oh, it is painful, yes, but you know it's 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 a price we pay. Although this weekend it was not a typical California weekend. We had high winds. It was. I was out. Yes, I was out at the beach again. It was fifty-four degrees when I got there. That was on the low side. I was got to the beach about five thirty in the morning Saturday and Sunday. But Saturday morning, it was so windy that as I was heading on the back side of the walk, the, the sand was blowing up in your face. It was it was pretty, pretty heavy winds. What are the winds like in your area? I mean, it was, I know, 90 miles out in 90 miles an hour out in Claremont. Uh, no, no snow, no sleet, no uh, what do they call it? Freezing rain. Of course, we don't get rain in California, so that doesn't matter. Uh, painful. But why are the markets doing what they're doing? That's the big question that everybody wants to know. And when will it stop? We're looking at the Dow Jones now down 945 points and the, the NASDAQ down 580. When's this going to stop? Well, it might be Wednesday. And I've told you this going on for a while. Why would that happen? Well, the Federal Reserve is meeting. And when the Federal Reserve meets, I told you they probably would not have the guts to go through with the raising of interest rates, there's uh, several uh, EU countries are saying, don't raise rates, Mr. Powell, don't raise rates. Yeah, well, we're down 935 points right now, 2.7%. NASDAQ is down 4.22% right now. So it is a painful morning if you are a stock investor, which I am. Painful morning. We'll see what happens. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, we've got a great broadcast lined up for you today. We are going to learn some marketing. We're going to learn some life skills, some ways to enhance your world with Matt today. Matt Koenig with us, our featured guest. Buyers want to know, why is the housing supply still so low? I heard Brea, California has 10 homes for sale. 80 homes is all there is in North Orange County. 80! Yeah. Why your debt-to-income ratio is so important, all that and more. You can reach me anytime, our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube, Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few.
Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Ask for Nikki. She's standing by to help. Dow Jones now down 939 points. NASDAQ down 573 points. The S&P 500, ooh, this is really painful watching this, but the S&P 500 is down 128 points to 10-year treasury. Yield down two points. Mortgage-backed securities, the bond is up 16 basis points, which means yield on interest rates is down a little bit. Now, we've been watching, we, we, we always watch the interest rates for you. But every week on Thursday, the interest rates come out about 7 a.m. 3.56 was the rate this last week. 3.56, you have to pay 7 tenths to get it. Last year, same week, 2.77. Elections have consequences. If you're looking to buy a house, that might be not, not, not the fun for you. But why is all of this happening? Well, we do know that a lot of it has to do with fear over... Ukraine, Russia invading Ukraine, China invading Taiwan, uh, Iran looking for nukes. All that stuff is going on. The Fed, they're looking at high interest rates because, or, or increasing interest rates because of the rapid inflation. But raising interest rates into an economy that's slowing down, is that smart? Now what's the Fed going to do? Right, so we've got a lot of a lot of reports coming out. Case Schiller and FHFA new home sales, pending home sales, all coming out this week. The Fed's favorite measure of inflation, the personal consumption expenditure, is going to be coming out this week. Uh, we're looking at in, uh, the the market expecting that personal consumption expenditures to rise from five point seven to five point nine percent. We might even see it up into the sixes. Uh, what is a Fed chairman to do? But you know something? Here's the issue. If you have been listening to Ron Siegel Radio for any length of time, you know that I tell you that interest rates, you know, does it matter? Well, yeah, it matters short term, right? Because it's what is your blended household interest rate. Now, if you can get your blended household interest rate down, that's going to benefit you. But on the flip side, what if you can get your income up? Will it help? Uh, we're going to talk about that one. This is the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. So Matt Koenig is with us. And, and uh, we got this guy, Joe Ingram, on, the, on uh, watching as well. Now, Joe likes to tell everybody who, who he likes. But you know something? Very few ever, people ever reciprocate. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't admit to knowing Joe. I mean, yeah, he's been on the show a few times. But most of us, you know, we know, we know Joe. Oh, yeah, we know Joe. Joe's a good and guy. Now, now, Matt, you and Joe were on a, a program together, and, and I, was, I was trying to send you uh, a, a, a audio clip. Didn't go through. I got a bad feeling about this. That's all we could say when we talked to Joe. But, Matt, yes. welcome to the broadcast. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm good, Ron. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm excited. So you're out there helping small businesses all over the country generate more business. Is that is that is that kind of one of your one of your missions? Yeah, I would say that's a pretty accurate way to put it, man. Like I I do uh, coaching for uh, small businesses and for men. So uh, what I like to try and do is help businesses learn how to do things on their own. Uh, I spent years doing marketing for businesses and uh, helping some very large companies in this country uh, gain market share. But dude, I, I just realized I'm like, there's all this stuff I'm doing for people. But, you know, th there are certain points where you go, this is so easy for people to do. Uh, I feel a little morally conflicted being able to charge so much when I can just teach somebody how to do it on their own. And so I, this year I just shifted gears and said, you know, I'm going to make 2022 the year that I help small businesses and entrepreneurs learn how to take some things into their own hands that are easy to do, not too time consuming and see if I can save them, you know, a few thousand bucks a year. And uh, so far 
uh, people that have been jumping on board have been really liking it. So I'm, so I'm going to challenge you a little bit just to see your thoughts. Yeah, push. Okay. So, and, you know, I, I love some of the programs that you're teaching. I love the idea of, of empowering people. Yeah. But here's the question I'm going to throw at you. I just finished a book and it's called Who, Not How. And I love this book. I mean, it went out there. And basically the premise of the book, if you haven't read it, is as a business owner, you have to figure out who is going to do things, not how to do things. And, you know, Matt's an expert. You're an expert at what you do. And you could probably teach me how to do it. I'm, I'm sure you could. It probably, might take you longer than the average, but, it'll take, but I could probably learn it. <laughs> but... By taking that time to do it myself, am I helping my business or am I better off paying for somebody else to do it and me continuing to do what I do best? I think it's a good question. And you know what the honest answer is? It depends on you, right? Because here's the thing. Something that may, when I say something is very easy, uh, something may come easy to me that doesn't come easy to someone else. Right. Um, so I'll give you some examples. Uh, I am a sales trainer by trade. Uh, Grant Cardone's people taught me to be a trainer decades ago. Another big name uh, taught me to be a sales trainer decades ago. And here's the reality. I worked with automotive companies for years and I saw, okay, everybody, in my opinion, everybody who's in a leadership role, a management role, it should be the number one trainer to their people. But after spending time in a lot of organizations, I realized why they hire it out because some of these guys they're just not that good at, they're good at doing the job, but they're not good at teaching others to do the job. So they hire out somebody else to do it. Well, the same goes with marketing. Like if you were to ask me, Hey Matt, um, do you do your own Google analytics and things like that? I would go, Oh dear God, no. Like learning the whole ad platform for Google and becoming a master of that is not my expertise. And I feel like it's a smarter investment to pay somebody else to do it. But with what I teach text message marketing, this to me is something that literally anyone can do. They could have their teenager run it for them. It's one of those things that the learning curve is so short and easy. If you can send a text from your phone, you can manage text marketing as a small business owner. So for 95% of the people out there that are an entrepreneur, a startup, or a small business owner, this is something they're, they're, it's a bigger benefit to learn how to do yourself because they're likely spending hundreds to thousands every month on text marketing. Uh, and most of the money is just going toward me pushing a button instead of you. Interesting. So, so the concept there, then what I, what I might, how I might apply that, because I always look at, you know, we run several small businesses. Uh, we've got a lending team that we're, we, we lead and, and the, obviously the radio program, the media production company. But again, I look at it and say, okay, I've only got so many hours. So maybe I need to say, okay, Matt, how hard, how hard would it be for me to have somebody in my organization learn how to do this? As opposed to me, oh, I, you know, like, like I, auto, I try to automate almost everything, right? That means Josh does it, right? <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. But, but, but Josh now has people that help him do it too, because how much can I, well, I can throw a lot at Josh, but, <laughs> and I try, but isn't that, the, isn't that kind of the, the, the hybrid of what I'm saying and what you're saying both? It is. I mean, here's the deal. Like, uh, let's say you're a restaurant owner right? The reality is the owner of the restaurant is probably going to, let's say with tax marketing, they're probably going to hand it off to like one of their managers to deal with it. A millennial. Right? What's that? Yeah. A millennial. A millennial. Yeah. But you know, here's the thing though, like I'm 46. Okay. So for me now I've been doing this for, you know, well, well over a decade, but, but the reality is in my mid forties, this is something that it's, it's easy adoption. Like for, for me to go in and, and do this. And I was doing what most people do up until this past year, I was leasing someone else's platform and doing everything through there. And then I, when I realized I could set it up myself for about a, a tenth of the cost and run it myself, I went, wait a minute, this is just as easy as all the, you know, done for you stuff. And I spend one tenth of the money. Why am I not doing this for myself? And so I spent a decade utilizing other people's tools and platforms because I thought that was the only way that it was easy. But I'm telling you, if you're a small business, yeah, I mean, a lot of times the owner is not going to be the one doing it, but it's easy enough that they could if they had like management changeover or if they lost their Josh, they could go, okay, I could take the reins and do this until I replace the person that's doing it. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I, I was brought up in a, in a small business and 
one of the things that we we taught I was taught and I taught to my kids was you got to know how to do everything. I'm not sure that's that's still you can still do that, but for the most part, I mean, when when we had our import export company, I moved I, I unloaded the first truck into the biggest warehouse we had. Oh, that's right? awesome. just so I knew how long it would take. Yeah, it makes Didn't sense. Didn't do another one, but that was but but I could. Yeah, I mean, look at all the stuff behind you. Like the reality is you're not going to, if you tried to build your own website, run all your own ads, do all your own marketing, like, you know, people say you become a jack of all trades and a master of none, right? And listen, I'm not like, I, I've realized last year I dabbled in so many things. I, I bought and sold a, a software company overseas. Uh, between that, between texting, between speaking engagements, between, you know, coaching, uh, high level coaching for executives. I was spread so thin and I was like, okay, what am I doing well out of these things? And I think the challenge is, you know, COVID hit, a lot of places cut their spend everywhere and they started going, what can I do myself? But a lot of them tried to take on things that they couldn't because they were just too hard. You know what I mean? So what I'm trying to do in 2022 is like, how can I help people do the easy things? And that way they can farm out the stuff that is hard. So their money's well spent. Great information. We're going to continue our conversation with Matt Koenig when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. Buyers want to know why is housing supply still so low and why your debt to income ratio is so important. All that and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off air number 800 306 1990 800 306 1990 or Ron Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numero one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Welcome back to Ron Single Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Single Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The real time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Single Radio. Visit rsrhomedigest.com, rsrhomedigest.com. 
Find out exactly what the county recorder knows about your property, what the market believes about your property. It's all there in a monthly email. And it's compliments of Ron Siegel Radio. Buyers want to know, why is housing supply still so low? One key question that's top of mind for home buyers this year is, why is it so hard to find a house to buy? The truth is, we're in the ultimate seller's market. So real estate is ultra competitive for buyers right now. The number of buyers searching for a home greatly outweighs how many homes are available for sale. While low inventory in the housing market is not new, it's a challenge that continues to grow over time. Here's a look at two reasons why today's housing supply is low and what that means for you. Number one, new home construction fell behind for several years. The graph that Josh is showing you, if you're watching us on ronsegalradio.tv, any of our socials, or the ABC News and Talk AM 1490 video feed. The graph shows new home construction for single-family homes over the past five decades, including the long-term average for housing units completed. Builders exceeded that average during the housing bubble. That's in red on the graph, again, if you're watching us. The result was an oversupply of homes on the market, so home values declined. That was one of the factors that led to the housing crash back in 2008. Since then, the level of new home construction has fallen off for the last 13 straight years. Builders have not been able to construct enough homes to meet the historical average, again illustrated on the graph in green. That underbuilding left us with a multi-year inventory deficit going into the pandemic. The pandemic, number two, the pandemic's impact on the housing market. Then when you hit the pandemic hit, it fueled a renewed appreciation focus on the meaning of home, having a safe place to live, work, school, and exercise became even more important for Americans throughout the country. So as mortgage rates dropped to at or below 3%, buyers eagerly entered the market looking to capitalize on those low rates to secure a home that would fulfill their changing needs. At the same time, sellers hesitated to put their houses on the market as concerns about the pandemic mounted. The result? The number of homes available for sale dropped even further. A recent article from Realtor.com explains, quote, last month, the number of home listings dropped 26.8% compared with the same time a year earlier. This meant there were about 177,000 fewer homes listed in what's already typically a slower month due to the holidays and the colder weather, unquote. What does all this mean for you? For a buyer, low inventory can be a challenge. You want to find the home of your dreams, you don't want to settle. But what if there aren't just aren't that many homes to choose from? There is good news. Experts are projecting more homes will soon become available thanks to sellers re-entering the market. Danielle Hale, chief economist at Realtor.com, shares this hope but offers perspective. Quote, we expect we'll start to see a turnaround and inventory will stabilize and start to go up a little bit in 2022. But that means we're looking at inventory levels of roughly half of what we saw before the pandemic. For buyers, the market is likely to continue to move fast. If you see a home you like, you want to jump on it right away, unquote. Basically, inventory is still low, even though more homes are coming. But you shouldn't put your plans on hold because you're waiting for those additional houses to hit the market. Instead, stick with, the, with your search and perspective through today's low inventory. You can find your next home if you're patient and focused. Remember, your goals, why finding home is important. Those things should be the driving force behind your search. Share them with your agent. Be clear about your priorities. Your trusted advisor is your greatest support as you navigate to those, today's low housing market. Bottom line, if you're planning to buy this year, the key to success will be patience Given today's low inventory, let's chat about your goals, your objectives. That's the real-time real estate segment, again, brought to you by the Area Trusted Real Estate Professionals. Text SLT Home Digest to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does, or you can visit rsrhomedigest.com. So let's continue our conversation. Matt Koning is with us. Uh, 50% of marriages ending in divorce. Well, Matt, Orange, we're, we're in Orange County, California. It's 70% here. Oh, dear God. First well, time marriage has ended divorce. 
Yeah, I, I when I heard your your segment, it was talking about like a you know a mortgage uh, divorce lending professional. I'm like, I didn't even know that was a career thing. Like, obviously, I know you know like you know a lot of marriages are ending divorce, pretty sad deal. But I didn't realize so many were that now there's a job for like divorce mortgage pros. I, I didn't even know that was a thing. You know that it's an interesting that you mentioned that because that's exactly what I was going to ask you about. Not not about divorce and lending, but you know, the fact of the matter is, is we don't know what we don't know. So you made a comment about in the last segment, and I'm not going to repeat it. If you missed it, shame on you, but go back and listen again. It, it'll be posted today. By, by the end of the day, Josh will have all the segments posted. You can go to ronsegalradio.com and check the radio archive segment. But, you know, I wouldn't have had any clue until, until you and I spoke last week, week before, whatever it was that all these platforms were there even to create some of the things that you're teaching, right? So, you know, you, you, you're ignorant and I, I never, I don't use the word stupid because I don't think I'm a stupid person. I just was ignorant. I didn't know what I didn't know until I was, you know, met you. And now you're sharing with all everybody on Ron Siegel radio. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, here it's funny, Ron, I, I didn't know what I didn't know. And, and I'm a text marketing guy. So when I first got into it, um, you know, there were things like, like a great example. So I went out looking when I first got started in texting, it, I, I, it was an accident. I, I literally stumbled into it. I know you were sexting and it came out as texting. Exactly. And then from there, <laughs> being in business, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, the funny thing though, man, is like, uh, so I obviously I text and I text into companies for stuff, but when I got started in it, I did it because I was at an ice cream place with my kids and they texted in to get a free ice cream deal. And I went, Ooh, I could use this for business if I could tweak it and use it in a different way. But the first things I started doing was looking up like how to start your own texting platform. And man, when I did that in 2011, dude, you'd have to spend over a hundred grand to like set up your own platform and, and all that stuff, which is why everybody did what I did. Went out and like, you know, lease, lease something online and they have the little short codes and they're shared. And, you know, that's how the cost is affordable. Right. Um, but what I didn't realize, you know, because I, I had sold my texting company to a big real estate homes magazine and uh, I did not compete for years. So I, I wasn't paying attention to some of the changes. When I got back in, I went in the same way I knew. All right, let's go lease a platform, spend a bunch of money. Uh, and, and then I stumbled into something and I went, wait, wait, I can create my own. I like, I can literally set up my own platform. And so before bringing it out to anybody else, I went through and I set it up and I started using it and I went, well, well, this is exactly what I've been paying a monthly fee to everybody else for. Like, what's the catch? And there was no catch just a, a decade ago. Other companies were smart enough to invest in building a connection so they could then just lease out the, the business to other people. And I went, well, this is great. And, and I'm going to just be straight with you. My first thought was, well, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to do what I used to do, but now I'm just going to have a much higher profit margin. And sure. uh, when I started doing it. I had some buddies reaching out going, Hey, you know, what do you charge to do it? What do you charge to do it? And I said, well, I can show you how to do it yourself. You could pay me for that, or you can pay me monthly. And, and listen, going back to what you said earlier, one of the guys, our buddy, Mike went, listen, for our, for our dealership, we'd rather just pay you to do it. And I went, okay, cool happy to do it. But for other folks, I created a course and I'm like, listen, <laughs> I, I, it's kind of like with everything with business, it's the same way I do with coaching. You know, a lot of coaches are looking for that high dollar, get, make money every month thing. And I'm like, I'm that guy that goes, look, if in, if in 90 days, I can't help you be able to take control of this yourself. I'm a, I'm probably not the right coach for you. I'm, I'm not doing well. Uh, but I'm like the most things, if they're easy enough, I just feel like I just want to show people how to do it, man. And don't get me wrong. I want them to pay me to show them, right? Sure. Uh, because I'm foregoing a lifetime of income uh, by just charging them every month. But I also feel like the way things are evolving now, with people working from home and stuff like that, more companies are trying to make stuff do it yourself. 90% uh, of those do it yourself things you can't do yourself. It's just a hook so that you'll hire them. But with texting, it became one of those deals where it's like, it really is easy to do it yourself. And I feel like, my first thing should be to offer that to people. But anybody that does my training, there's also a thing where it says to them, look, if you've tried and you feel like it's just too hard to do it yourself, you can hire us to set it up for you. And well, I went through I went through your training myself, and it was uh, about as simple as it gets. Now, you know, I'm you know, following along, and I, there's some tweaks in there. There's some questions in there that I, I still don't know, don't understand. But I think that's going to happen with anything. But the bottom line is, 
I'm going to guess because you, you did this with texting and I, you know, I don't know how long texting is even going to be around, ah, right? Because right. we don't know what the future holds and you're out there now that you're teaching people how to do this, you're out there at the same time looking to what the future might be, right? Because 20 years ago, no one even heard of texting. Well, exactly. And when I remember when I first, so I've, I've been in the mobile space actually since 1995, a lady came into our uh, dealership from a company called Centennial Wireless and spoke to my general manager and said, Hey, we want to make you an outlet for cell phones. And uh, my general manager goes, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. People can wait till they get home to make a phone call. And uh, <laughs> I was a car salesman, 20 year old kid at this time. And I follow, follow her out and I go, Hey, he doesn't see the vision for this. Can I become an agent? For you guys and she said sure 10 minutes later i had a trunk full of cell phones and contracts four months later all my friends had cell phones six months later they all hated me for going over their minutes <laughs> but but back then you know texting wasn't a thing a few years later when it started becoming a thing and you had the weird you know people were paying for texting i saw this and i went there's something here i don't get it yet but i know it's the future fast forward time you know here we are people it's a number one way people communicate so I don't think it's going anywhere. Yeah, but you know something? I didn't think that that the fax machine was going to go anywhere. I mean, I'm dating myself. That's fair. But I didn't think the fax machine was going to go anywhere. And then, then we got email. I mean, first off, we had, you know, it was great FedEx, right? You had to be, if, you, if it absolutely has to be there overnight, you know, FedEx, you have the papers. Yep. You get the fax machine and, and well, the fax machine's never going to go away. Remember the rail, the thermal paper that rolled up? Oh and, yeah, with like a, like a waxy. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the best, right? And then you have the the the, the paper paper fax or the the uh, you know single sheet. And, yeah, the, and then you have like e fax, the digital fax numbers. That, right, like, right. So you know, we thought none of those were going away either, but but every one of them did. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio. We're going to continue our conversation with Matt Coney when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. Why your debt to income ratio is so important? I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe I'll do a spe separate video on that one, Josh, and we'll uh, just uh, continue our conversation with Matt. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few.
Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The Your Credit Matters segment brought to you today by MySoCalLender.com. MySoCalLender.com. Hey, make sure that you're watching your credit reports all the time. If you have any questions about that, give me a call at 800 306 1990. We're going we're gonna to put up a whole segment or a whole section soon on our uh, channels of credit reports and credit tips. And I say that accurately, tips. That's one of those times we don't want the P, the, 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 the wind channel to, to, to stop our enunciation. But the bottom line here, right, you gotta, we got to get the commercials in there, the plugs in there. Your Credit Matters brought to you by MySoCalLender.com. Continue our conversation. Matt Koenig is with us. And we're chatting about di- uh, uh, text marketing. So, Matt, give me an idea. I mean, you talk about dealerships that you did this with. What are some of the other types of industries, entities? Give us just a, a high-level discussion. Who can make use of, of text marketing? So it's a good question. And the reality is every business. So the most recent stats that I read said that right now, uh, over 50% of people say that they're receiving coupons by text from businesses. That, that's nuts, number one. But the funny part is just under 50% of people surveyed said, I want to receive brand messages by text. That actually took me by surprise because the fact of the matter is like with email, you kind of don't care because you can, you know, put it in your junk folder. You can ignore it. You know what I mean? Like if you sign up for something to get a coupon, then you can just ignore it perpetually. But right. with texting, 98% of text messages get read, 93% within three minutes. So if you're a business, uh, let's say a restaurant, for example, restaurants use texting to uh, one in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We we helped them grow their revenue by 30% within 90 days by implementing texting. And the funny part was Tuesday was their slowest day of the, uh, of the week. Just it was a horrible day. So what they started doing was Tuesdays. That first, they built up a text list, which only took about two months. But then what they would do is Tuesday around 3, 30, 4 o'clock, they'd send a text blast out saying, here's our specials tonight. And they did like some buy one, get one appetizer and some like, you know, whatever drink deals. And uh, within 30 days, Tuesday became one of their busiest days of the week. And it, they ended up in, implementing like a bar trivia deal. So it works great for that. When I sold my- We have fun with that one because I'm going to give you two uh, two usages that I see. And I don't know if, if you have this in Tennessee. What's that? But out in California, we have Taco Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I happen to go to a restaurant that I kind of prefer, Tito's Tuesday, but that's just me. Oh, uh, Tito's. Oh, that used to be my jam. Ah, oh, good old hand <laughs> America. Yeah, out of Texas, as a matter of fact. Yeah, you know, so it works good for other stuff, though. My company got bought by a real estate homes magazine company, and like- Almost all of my business was with automotive dealers and somehow uh, this homes magazine stumbled across me and they said, Hey, could we do this for real estate listings in our magazine to boost leads for our, our uh, advertising agents? And I went, yeah, of course. And so literally we worked with them and, and what they would do is in their homes magazine, every one, it was, you text the MLS code to the number and it would immediately respond back with a digital link to the home with the, with the listing agent. So, and it would then also send an email notification to the listing agent with the person's mobile phone number. So there's a good application. If you're a realtor, you know, you put a, you put a a call to action on your signs that says text this code to this number and it can respond back with a digital link for the home. So now nobody's got to get out in the rain to try and pull one out of your box. Or if all the little listing deals are gone, you know, you don't have to go, Oh gosh, they're missing. So, I mean, there's, there are a ton of applications. Doesn't matter what kind of business you're in. Walgreens uses texting to let you know stuff when they've got promos. I mean, I can't find a business to not have a good application, but if you want to throw some things out <laughs> and say, well, what about this? What about that? Here's one that I, I just, uh, last week I had lunch with a gentleman that is the uh, announcer for the local high school basketball team. Oh, right on. So I said, what happens if we, we, we do a yogurt land giveaway at the high school basketball games? Oh, that's awesome. Right? So he's going to announce, you know, text this to that. And 
you'll get a, into a raffle for a for a, a five dollar gift card to Yogurt Land. That's awesome. And if it's at a basketball game, there's so so many cool things you can use a trigger like hoops, right? Text hoop to the hoops to this number to get entered for the giveaway. And the beautiful thing is, you know, you can randomize who wins, whatever, and then you notify them by text. So you send. You, you literally segment and you send a message to the, the one person that says, you know, congratulations, you're the winner, but you can literally send a message to everybody else that says, uh, Hey, you didn't win the $5, you know, gift card, but here's a 10% off coupon for yogurt land. So, I mean, the cool thing is texting gives you a way to engage with people and stay top of mind awareness. And as long as you don't text them more than once a week, you go more than once a week, you're going to burn them out. They're going to be bored. But I mean, you think about it, mortgage lenders, things like that. There's so much opportunity. Hey, still in the market for a house. We've got a great deal with, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, Jen, I can't see the whole name, the one behind you. Geneva but, Financial? Yeah. Like it, it's like, hey, still, still in the market for a home. Geneva Financial has got great rates. Click here to apply now and see what your rate would be right? You can push that out through a message. So there are a lot of good, good applications and it, it's just another medium. I always think of it like this. Your business is your home, right? But um, kind of like a website is your address, right? But if you don't tell people your address, they can't find your home. Texting is just one more doorway into your business. Your website's a doorway. Your Facebook ad is a doorway. Uh, your radio show is a doorway. Your texting code is a doorway. It's just giving people the opportunity to connect in the way they like most. Now, do you have to have one of those, uh, what do they call it? Um, oh, a, a fancy phone number, you know, like oh, a, the short codes, not the short codes, but like I, I happen to own a number that's uh four, seven, eight to Oh, uh, a vanity number. No, the cool thing about texting is you literally can set it up with a local number or a toll free number. Um, and the funny thing is I would say with texting, you don't really want, um, to necessarily make the phone number like a branded one that's, but you want one that's easy to remember. Like I hear you, I remember the last four digits of the phone number you've said on the show, 1990, 1990, 1990, right? It sticks. So I always tell people when you're looking for a number, one or two things, if you do business nationally, then get a toll free number and they're literally $2 a month. It's cheaper than anything. Or you can get a local number and then try and get one that's easy, right? With, you know, you know similar numbers at the end, right? To keep, to keep it simple for folks. But the whole idea is make it easy for people to remember. And, uh, and, and then that, that's how it works. I mean, it isn't rocket science, but it can be just as beneficial if you, if you take the time to do it well. So you're really basically from what I'm gathering from just the few weeks that I've, I've paid any attention to this whole concept is you're, you're totally limited to whatever you can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It's super crazy tricky like that. I mean, there's three things, right. That you, that you want to focus on, right. It is uh, communication, uh, community and cash flow, right? So one, you want to be able to communicate with people by text because that's the number one medium they use. So common sense says, well, let me talk to you how you want to be spoken to. Right. Sure. Uh, but number two, there are a lot of like um, big companies, big influencers, Tony Robbins, all these guys, they, they use texting platforms where they say to people, hey, got questions about business, yada, yada, text my this number. Well, you're not really texting Tony Robbins mobile phone. He wouldn't give that out to everyone, but it goes into his platform and then his people go through and answer the questions. But it's a good way, like a lot of times, like I tell people, look, if you want to get my best stuff, if you want to get my best tips, you want to know where I'm speaking. Text Matt to 833-981-0002, standard messaging rate supply, right? So you can you can give people, you know, like a, a call to action with a fear of missing out. Like, hey, I only give exclusive info through this channel. So join my text list. So I can build a community there that feel like, hey, we're part of something special. And then the third one is cash flow, right? I mean, if you're in business, you want to make money. And so it's like, well, how do I do it? Well, with texting, anytime I need a bump in business, I just push a message out to my audience. Hey, I came up with this new program. Boom. Hey, I've got this new product that I'm an affiliate for and I use it and I love it. Boom. And, and when I send stuff out like that, different software tools that, that are beneficial to me, I'll share with my network. Hey, I found this tool. It's been really helpful. You might want to check it out. Here's a link. Boom. Anytime I can add value to my audience, it always results in, in profit for me down the road. So, you know, a lot of people focus on what's my ROI, what's my return on investment. I, I, I look at my rock. I use that acronym R O C K return on caring and kindness. If I put out things where I show my community, 
I care about you. And so here's, here's an, an act of kindness that will help you, right? That's my rock for, for the way I focus on stuff, right? My return on caring and kindness. If I, if I show people I care and I offer them things that are helpful that I'm not charging them for too, then by default, they want to do business with me when they go to spend money and they reach out to me. Do you do this? Or do you know someone that does this? And the return on caring and kindness is far higher than focusing on return on financial investment. And you feel better about that yourself. I mean, not only are you, you you're doing something that's beneficial, but I, I submit that you're going to feel a whole lot better about it when you're doing these things to, to, and, and you see that results for other people. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just like anything in life, right? Tony Robbins said this, he said, you find true fulfillment. He goes, you know, you make all the money and that feels good. He goes, but you get your true fulfillment when you, when you start helping other people. And there is this feeling of satisfaction. Like when I help somebody set something up, I have a young man back in Michigan. Okay. A young guy, I know him through a relative that was a former business partner. That's a relative. Of his. And this kid has like, you know, COVID just crushed the company he worked for. And he's like, you know what? I've realized the only way I'm going to make it is if I do my own thing. He's like, what do you recommend? I'm like text marketing. Most small business owners, most small business owners aren't going to do it themselves. So I said, this is the way for you to go. And I've been working with him and, and he reached out to me and he's like, he's already got a company that's like, boom, they want to do business with them. They want to set this stuff up. I, I mean, he's not paying me <laughs> to help him with this stuff. He's a good kid. You know, he's got a family. I'm like, you know what? Let me give him some advice. Let me, let me help this kid figure out some of these things for himself. And he's reaching out because he's brand new at all. He's like, ah, I've never done this. So how do I do this? And how do I do that? I'm like, Hey, number one, make your focus. How can I help them hit their goal? Well, that's one of the things you just said when you were doing talking about what's your weakest day. Let's work on that because, you know, the other days, you know, fr Friday and Saturday, a restaurant really doesn't need help. No. If they do, they're in trouble. <laughs> right. right? There, there might be, you know, three, four in the afternoon. That might be their problem times. So, again, you're helping somebody else to achieve their goals. Great information, Matt. If you want to meet Matt, give me a call at 800-306-1990. Happy to put you in touch with Matt, help you get, get started on these things. Um, we always love helping people that way. And as always, I ask you, set that first radio preset button to come back here and join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to Josh and Sean who are engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.